I've been wrong about a lot of things. A lot of important people have been wrong about a lot of things. Dr. Peter Atia, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, Dr. Andrew Huberman. They've all come out and said, hey, like we've course corrected on this. But one thing that we've all been wrong about, at least in the research and scientific community, when it comes down to one meal a day, OMAD or fasting, is the idea behind protein intake and how much we can get in one serving. We all used to collectively be concerned that we couldn't get enough protein or absorb enough protein in one sitting. And no one would have possibly known this at all up until like a month ago when this literature came out. So there's just no way that we could have known this was the case. So of course we were wrong. Now, enough about that. Let's talk about what actually is going on. Now, the concern was always, okay, with one meal a day, are you getting enough protein absorbed in one sitting? So if you only ate one meal a day, or let's pretend you're fasting and you ate two meals per day, three meals per day, if you tried to get enough protein, even if you achieved consuming the right amount of protein, would you actually absorb it? Because so many people in the scientific community would say, well, that's the biggest concern. You're not getting enough protein. You're not absorbing it. And eventually, you're going to run into a problem because you're not getting enough protein. Well, let's break it down. Turns out we were wrong, but in a very good way. A very good way, because now we have new stuff that makes us a little more liberated. After today's video, I popped a link down below for Thrive Market. Now that is an online membership-based grocery store and that is a 30% off discount link and a $60 free gift when you use that special link down below. So think about being able to walk into a grocery store and immediately narrow down what you want. You want sugar-free, you want high protein, you want this, you can use these filters and shop for whatever you want. Plus, I also have my own signature products that I've created with Thrive Market. I've created some low-carb keto truffles that are sweetened with allulose. I've created nut butters that are sweetened with allulose. They're like these dessert butters. I've linked out to them down below as well. But you can also just go to Thrive Market and you can search for like uh, Thomas DeLauer nut butters or Thomas DeLauer low-carb truffles, whatever. Anyhow, that link down below saves you 30% off your entire first grocery order and a free $60 gift. So if you're shopping, you're getting groceries for yourself, you've got to check them out. And they've been a big supporter of this channel for over half a decade. So thank you to them and thank you to you. Let's think about nature for a second. Nature does a lot of one meal a day type fasting. Nature does a lot of one meal every 48 hours or 72 hours or 39 hours, there's no rhyme or reason. We just know that in a natural setting, like a lot of animals will go long periods of time without eating and then they'll have food, right? It wouldn't make any sense if those animals couldn't absorb a lot of the protein that they were getting. Like, it just didn't make, wouldn't make sense. Like, if you think about a lion, a lion could go days without eating and then all of a sudden they get some food you think their body is going to say, nope, sorry, we're stopping you at 40 grams of protein. No, that lion needs it. There was a demand, especially if they have been going long periods of time without eating. Now, the study that I'm talking about that just recently came out, I've talked about in other videos where I broke it down more in depth, but I wanted to talk about it more specifically with fasting and OMAD, was published in Cell Reports. And they were looking specifically at the post-workout sort of anabolic window and how much protein you could absorb. We used to think that you could only absorb 30, 40 grams of protein in one sitting. The bottom line is that this study demonstrated using tracers where we could actually watch the protein and where it went. They found that up to 100 grams of protein and possibly beyond, because 100 grams is all they measured to, there was a dose-dependent increase in amino acids in the bloodstream but more importantly, a significant increase with muscle protein synthesis. What this told us is that if subjects ate a lot of protein in one sitting, they still got a ton more protein synthesis than if they ate 25 or 30 grams. So eating more protein in one sitting does not mean that you are just wasting the protein above and beyond 30 or 40 grams. So with OMAD, this is amazing. Because for so long, we were skeptical of OMAD. And granted, I still am for other reasons, just because I feel like you might not get all your micronutrition in, you might not get the nutrients that you need. But I have some solutions with that, and we'll get to that at the end of this video. But the biggest concern was the protein thing. So now it is implied that you could consume 
a lot of protein feasibly with no upper limit as long as you have enough time to digest and utilize it. So in the essence of a 24 hour period, you consume, let's just hypothetically say 150 grams of protein, and then you don't eat again for another 24 hours, as long as you have enough time, you're potentially going to absorb that protein. Here is an excerpt from the study specifically, and this, by the way, was a human randomized control trial. This wasn't small literature. Collectively, these data show that the ingestion of a large amount of protein requires a prolonged time period to allow complete digestion, amino acid absorption, exogenous protein-derived amino acid release into the circulation, and subsequent amino acid incorporation into tissue. It sounds negative. It sounds like you just need, you need time. If you eat protein, you need time. This is positive. This means, hey, if you eat a small amount of protein, you don't need that much time to digest it. If you eat a large amount of protein, you're not wasting it. You just need a large amount of time to digest it. So how do we rope this into any kind of fasting regime or OMAD? With one meal a day, you could eat a large amount of protein. You just gotta give it time to digest, which in essence you are anyway, right? With traditional fasting, maybe 16-8 or whatever like that, my recommendation would be to have as much of your protein as you can towards the earlier part of your eating window. And that way you're getting most of that protein when you're very sensitive to it and the anabolic signaling would be most high, right? So you get this big bolus of protein and then you can continue to have protein later on throughout the day with your other meals. But the bottom line is that as long as you are getting that protein in to the amount that you need, you'll probably utilize it. But one of the most important things that once again we have to remember that I have to just beat into your just head as much as I possibly can is that you need to have a signal too. So the resistance training becomes very important because muscle protein synthesis is only going to be as good as where there's a signal, okay? So you have to resistance train at least a couple days a week and get a signal so that the protein actually wants to be synthesized into muscle. So when we look at OMAD, so much of the controversy was surrounding the fact that you wouldn't get enough calories in, you wouldn't get enough protein in, and you wouldn't get enough micronutrition. Now, let's talk about how we can mitigate this for a second. The calorie situation can be problematic because if you get too little calories and you do one meal a day every day, eventually your metabolic rate will slow down. The caveat though, is if you increase your protein intake, you can at least preserve the lean muscle mass. So at least the weight that you will lose is more likely to be fat and less likely to be protein leading to a less likely chance that you will slow your metabolic rate down too much. No matter which way you spin it, if you reduce your calories aggressively, your metabolic rate's gonna slow down. So what I would recommend is if you choose to do OMAD, maybe try doing OMAD for one week at a time and then take a week off and do maybe a regular intermittent fasting regime or something, whatever's comfortable for you. I don't think OMAD should be done continuously for long periods of time because I don't want to see your calories just go so low that you crash your metabolism. But now we can be a little more flexible with that. Okay, I'm not as concerned with someone doing one week of OMAD if they're getting adequate protein in. What you need to aim for is roughly one gram per pound of body weight. However, if you're very overweight and you have a lot of excess fat on you, you probably need to account for that. If you know that your ideal body weight is around 200 pounds and you currently weigh 300, you probably wanna aim for 200 grams of protein, not 300 grams of protein. Be realistic, you wanna aim for mostly your lean body mass weight, okay? So if you get that in and your resistance training, you'll probably be okay. This study really opened the doors for so much. Whether you're fasting, you're OMAD, or you used to eat six meals per day, now we know that the protein in one sitting still counts. I'll see you tomorrow.